What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch and review for you. So today we are talking about the OPI Make the Rolls collection for summer 2023. We've got 12 new colors and it's actually a really beautiful rainbow of shades and a lot of those are actually a pearlized finish which is a little bit of a controversial finish. A lot of people don't love that streaky sort of finish where you can see the brush strokes but it has been a little bit of a trendy finish lately and honestly I'm pretty excited to see it. I personally love it. I know some people think it's dated, but personally, I just think it's more of a classic look. And I feel like for those of us with shorter nail beds, it really does elongate that nail bed and it makes you look like you have longer nails, even if you keep them short. So yeah, I was excited to see it. And personally, I am a big OPI fan. They are the first salon brand I ever used and they've always had a special place in my heart. So I get excited when I see the new OPI collections, but let me swatch them for you and then we can talk a little bit more about my thoughts on the collection and also pricing, availability, all that good stuff. So roll the swatch footage. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today it's the Orly Bonder base coat. So we'll start with this first shade, Flex on the Beach, and this one I would describe as a slightly orange leaning salmon cream shade. And this polish is a great example of what I love about OPI and that is just how self-leveling they are. You can see when I'm applying it, especially the second coat, it almost looks a little bit lumpy, but as the polish dries out, it levels out on my nail so easily. A shade that I thought was going to end up needing a third coat just because I wasn't perfect with applying it ended up actually giving me two coat coverage. And I think that's one of the reasons why I always consider OPI to be such a beginner friendly brand because it just makes it really easy even if you're imperfect at painting your nails. By the way, this one did dry down slightly darker and a little bit matte and that is something that I noticed consistently through the entire collection but you can always pop on a glossy top coat. Next we have the first of the pearlized streaky finish polishes. This one is called Sanding in Stilettos and it's this really soft almost pastel-y orange pearlized streaky finish and again I just love shades like this. There's actually only four in the collection and then the other eight are a cream finish, but there's just something about this type of finish that I think is so special. And you can see how it really elongates my nail bed more than a cream finish would. And for me, a person who prefers to have shorter nails, but loves the look of longer nails, I feel like this is just the best of both worlds. So I ended up actually getting pretty much full coverage in two coats, but I wanted to see what would happen if I added a third. And I found that that gave me a lot more coverage and it made the color a lot more intense and bright. So I'm definitely going to be wearing this one as a three coater. Then we have the shade Sunscreening My Calls. And this one is another pearlized finish, but this one is in an intensely bright yellow. And this yellow actually has a little bit of a greenish undertone to it, which is something that I love in a yellow polish. I just love that almost highlighter neon kind of color. And this is just the non neon, slightly softer version of that. And I think having that pearlized streakiness in there just gives it a little bit more of a silvery touch, which does soften it up. So if you love those highlighter bright shades, but you don't want to wear a neon, this is such a perfect color for that. And I was really impressed with the coverage. It actually ended up giving me three coat coverage, which I feel like is pretty impressive for a yellow polish. They always tend to give me a little bit of trouble. Speaking of trouble, we've got this shade Stay Out All Bright. <laughs> Being a little dramatic there, it's actually not a difficult polish at all. This one is a very bright yellow cream shade, and it was a little bit sheer as I was applying it, but I did manage to get full coat coverage in three coats, but I feel like it was just barely there in three coats. And if you have longer nails, you'll probably need more. So I'm not sure that I would recommend it. Although looking at the swatch now in two coats, it did actually look like it gave me pretty nice coverage. So I don't know, maybe this is just in my head because looking at the swatch now, I'm like, this looks really good in three coats. It actually looked good in two coats too. So I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I'll have to try it again. Next we have this this stunning soft lime green cream shade. I don't actually know how they intended for the polish to be said out loud. It's called Summer Monday Fridays or Summer Monday through Friday or Summer Monday to Friday. I'm not quite sure. If somebody knows, let me know in the comments. But this is a really gorgeous shade. It almost has a little hint of that pastel-y kind of color to it, but it's so saturated and vibrant that it definitely feels like more of a summer shade to me. And this is another shade that gave 
gave me great coverage in three coats. It's so bright and pretty. I think this would actually be a really nice transition spring to summer as well, just because it has that softness, but also the very saturated vibrance of the green. So I definitely love this one. Moving on, we have the shade I'm Yacht Leaving, and this one is a stunning turquoise cream shade. I was so excited when I saw this one in the bottle, and I was so nervous that it wasn't going to give me good coverage, but it ended up giving me full coverage in two coats, and the color is just so bright and saturated. It reminds me of like a tropical island and just those beautiful turquoise waters, and it has that nice vibrant color without being a neon. So again, it's just perfect if you want to be very saturated and bright without being a little eye searing, eyes in pain kind of vibe. <laughs> but yeah, another stunning shade. Then we have the shade Surf Naked, and this one was actually my personal favorite of the collection. Just the combination of the color, the finish, and the formula was perfection for me. It's this really beautiful sky blue base color, and again, it has that pearlized streaky sort of finish to it, and it was just so opaque and easy to work with. It ended up giving me two coat coverage, and it looked so smooth and soft while still having that very vibrant color to it. I feel like I could potentially get away with wearing this during the colder months just because of that icy blue color, but it's also very warm, so it's perfect for summer. Next, we have the shade Charge It To Their Room, and this one is a medium verging on a little bit darker periwinkle cream shade. Again, such a stunning color, and I just love how deep and vibrant it is, and I love that sort of touch of purpley in this mostly blue toned shade. It's very gorgeous, it's very opaque, and it was just really smooth and workable. Again, OPI shades are just incredibly easy to apply for me. I just find that they're so beginner friendly, and I really appreciate that. Then we have the shade Skate to the Party, and this one is a medium light purple cream shade, and I thought based on the first coat that this was going to end up being a little bit more sheer and give me three coats for full coverage, but it ended up actually giving me full coverage in two, so I was very pleased with that. And it's just such a stunning color in general. You know I love a cool leaning purple, and I think these lighter shades that again just have this vibrance to them are so special and pretty for really any time of year. I feel like I could see this being a deep winter color or a springy color or like it is now a summer color. So it really just works for so many occasions. Then we have the shade Bikini Boardroom, which is the last of the pearlized finishes. And this one is in this gorgeous orchid shade. And this one was probably my second favorite of the collection. I absolutely love this pinky leaning purple kind of color. And again, the formula was so incredibly smooth and opaque. And with this brush from OPI, it's really easy to get flat, smooth brush strokes. So if you're worried about painting on sloppily, I think you don't have to worry when it comes to the OPI brushes. Although I am curious to try a streaky finish while doing maybe like a sort of zigzag line or just seeing how it would look if I didn't apply it straight down. I think that would be so fun to experiment with. The last two shades in the collection are incredibly similar pink cream shades. And when I saw them in the bottle, I actually thought that I accidentally got two of the same, but they are slightly different. So I'm gonna try my best to describe the differences between them. Although I will say on the nail, they look more different than they do in the bottle. This first shade is called Make Outside and it is this almost neon pastel pink cream shade that has a little bit of a coolness to it. I thought I got it fully opaque in two coats, but in the third coat, I did find that it had a little bit more saturation and vibrance to it. So I think that's the better option for me, but I did notice that it was slightly less self-level than the other shades in the collection, so I was a little disappointed in that. And then we have the final shade in the collection, which is called I Quit My Day Job, which is again a neon pastel pink cream shade, but this one is a little bit lighter and it definitely leans more warm toned. So you can see a little hint of that kind of orangey color in there. And this one ended up being a much easier formula for me. I was able to get full coverage in two coats and it applied a lot more smoothly and it self-leveled on my nails a little 
little bit better. So the two shades are similar enough that I don't think you necessarily need to own both. And I definitely prefer this one out of the two. So here are all of the shades together. And I have to say, just looking at this collection as a whole is an incredible feeling for me. I love a good color story. And I think OPI did an incredible job just making this perfect, slightly soft, but still very saturated rainbow of colors that all just feel so perfect for summer. And I think the true beauty of this collection is wearing them together because even though they are really pretty on their own, I think there's just so many opportunities to do a Skittle manicure where each nail is a different color or even just doing a few colors and then kind of mixing and matching because there's just so many shades that look really pretty together. And I think even having some contrasting shades together is so gorgeous. So I've been experimenting a lot with that and having a lot of fun with kind of just mixing them up and seeing what colors look nice together. And they all just work so well for it. Even mixing and matching the pearlized finishes with the creams works really well. So I think that to me is what makes this collection so special. But as you can see, the formulas were really easy to work with for the most part. And I just really enjoyed them on their own as well. So those are the polishes. And like I said, overall, I really enjoyed these. I especially loved that pearlized finish. I really do think OPI nailed it this time around, so to speak. Normally, I think that their best collections come in the fall. And of course, I haven't seen whatever they're coming out with for fall 2023. But I don't know, there's a good chance that this might end up being my favorite OPI collection of the year. So these polishes come in 15 milliliter bottles. They do have a sort of medium wide flat brush and it has a straight tip. That used to actually be my favorite type of brush. Although I will say, I think recently I do prefer the rounded tip, but I still think that this brush does make it pretty easy to apply. So if we're talking salon brands, this is really a great one to get into. And like I said, OPI is the first salon brand I tried and they're a big reason why I'm into nail polish in general. So I do think that they are beginner friendly. I did receive these polishes from the retailer Beyond Polish and they actually have a bunch of different brands there, but OPI sells for $8.75 USD there. And I also have a discount code. You can use the code Kelly to get 10% off your order. So I'll link that down below. But of course, they are also sold wherever you can get OPI. But yeah, like I said, I'm into this collection. I know not everybody is going to be, but I would love to hear your thoughts. So leave it all in the comments and let me know what are your thoughts on these pearlized finishes? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Or are you indifferent to them? If you enjoy my swatch and reviews in general, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And of course, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon, my Royal Astronomer, Amanda M, as well as my Cosmic Admirals, Rocky Man's daughter, Paula, Ken, Rosie, and Courtney. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Haiku and Haiku wants to know, if you had to choose what polish brand could you not live without and what is the polish that you can part ways with? I don't know. Oh my gosh. That's such a difficult question because obviously I'm a person who loves nail polish. I feel like at this point I probably have over 3,000 bottles, although I try to keep my collection manageable. But the reason that I have so many is because there's so many polishes that I just can't bear to part with. And there's also so many that I consider to be favorites, you know? Recently, I feel like I've been wearing a lot of Orly. I've been wearing a lot of ILNP and KB Shimmer. I've also been really getting into the smaller indie brands, which I've been showcasing in my small brand spotlight series. But I don't know if I could just pick one because I feel like it just depends depends on what my mood is. Like, I don't know that there's one that I would think like this is my go-to brand because I have like a few go-to brands that are mainstream, a few go-to brands that are indie, a few go-to brands that are drugstore brands, you know? So it's, it's hard to pinpoint which ones. <laughs> and I don't know that there's any brands that I use right now that I would be willing to give up completely because I've been doing this for so long that I've really gotten a handle on which brands I absolutely love and which brands I just don't really need. And those brands, I don't own any of their polishes. If I start to feel myself not really enjoying a brand anymore or not liking the colors or the formulas, I usually just get rid of them. But yeah, I feel like I'm at the point right now where I 
only use and wear brands that I really like. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know that I could get rid of any either. I'm sorry that's such a non-answer, but it is hard. I mean, if you look back over the years of my videos, you'll probably see that I used to use some brands that I just don't really use anymore. But then there are some times where they come back. Like there was a point where I got rid of all of my Essie polishes because I just didn't like that formula. And then years later, they changed the formula and now I'm really into them again. So yeah, I don't know. It's a tough question that I I'm giving a pretty much a non-answer to. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.